week yeah, is yeah. gone by and you are yeah, yeah, rolling yeah. with Rams. Who knew life could hey, be so gotta high. love it. Hey, listen, I'm so happy to have everybody on board today. Listen, we got a phenomenal guest. It's going to be a power hour. You all know how we like to do it. Um, This is awesome. This is awesome. You know, we've got to. Hey, Debbie, I see you. You rolling with Ramsey. I ain't seen you in a couple of weeks. I love I'm glad. I hope everything's all well. That hour was something else. Uh, uh, It's a beautiful thing to have a candidate on today so we can talk about some of the issues and some of the things that are happening and a lot of things that are taking place uh, because guess what this is the Wednesday before the election and next Wednesday will be the day it will be the day after and we hopefully hopefully prayerfully uh, we will know uh, uh, we will know that uh, you know we will know that, that we can see if we can uh, how do I say it you know if we're gonna be able to be back on the right track and, and so we're gonna try to keep it uh, make it do what it do um, but we got a great guest today uh, uh, a young lady who is running for the North Carolina House of Representatives District 80 by the name of Wendy Sellers and she's really cool so we're gonna uh, have Wendy on to just talk about her goals and why she decided to run and just a little bit things in general and what the the state of our democracy is and how we can all uh, be more involved uh, in what we're doing in understanding how the process works. Uh, I'll be putting out the links uh, later on this evening for last week's show when I was talking about basic principles of government, basic government. And that is something that we all should definitely have a handle on. So uh, that being said, let me go into the waiting room let me pull my guest in. She's going to be joining us. There she is. Hello, Wendy. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Well, How are you? I am well. You know, it's, it's a little cloudy out today. We're being blessed mm-hmm. with some rain, but that's okay. Y'all know all I got to say. I usually say the sun is shining. We're blessed, but that's all right. We got a cloudy day. It's overcast. It's raining outside, but that's not going to stop us from feeling phenomenal, being blessed and highly favored, and having this phenomenal guest that we have today. And it is awesome because guess what? I love having a candidate on because we can feel like where she is coming from and the changes that she, her vision and what she wants to see go on in her district. That's going to be pretty cool. So let's see if I can get it all right in one shot. Let me see if I can do it. I'm pretty good at this stuff. So candidate Wendy B. Sellers, who is running for North Carolina House of Representatives District 80, you are officially doing what? I am rolling with ramsey <laughs> that's what's up that's what's up what's up <laughs> oh man that is so cool i love it you got the thomasville background behind you but you better don't know yeah. they got- you done gave my my, my steelo away because you talking about it's rainy and it's cloudy and i got the beautiful blue sky oh, that's okay though that's the beauty of technology that is the that's beauty right. of that's technology right. hey i love it so mm-hmm. how things been going things are going you know, it's it's uh, election season and, you know, it's, it's different this year because of COVID, you know, um, past election seasons. You know, I'm, I was out, you know, talking to voters and attending, you know, events in the community. But unfortunately, this year, you know, we were not able to do those things. So um, but I'm still excited. You know, I'm still excited about this campaign, uh, about this election season and about the amazing turnout um, wow. that our country and Davidson County has had during early voting. So oh, that, I'm that excited is, about that. That is awesome. There's you know, they were saying on uh, the news today that we have had more than 50 percent of people early vote than like all of last the last election, which is. Yes. I think it's somewhere yes. around, I'm looking at the total, 74,253,653 people. Wow. wow. They're yeah. saying a record 74 plus million ballots will be cast six days before the election. That is just phenomenal. 
that yep. we've got it's that amazing. many people to say, hey, I want to make sure my vote count. I'm getting out there, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and, the, and the sad thing is, is that every vote should count. Right. And Most definitely. You know, unfortunately, the the powers to be, uh, the the opposition, we'll just say it like that, the opposition is doing everything they can to steal your vote. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hey. and make and and to try to make you think that your vote does not count, right? When it does, uh, when it does. Uh, I mean, I I mean the things that I've seen in the past three weeks, uh, from uh, turncoat Trojan horses telling you to not hijack the black vote, and uh, just you know, I love the state of Texas. I was stationed there more than one occasion. Wow. Travis County got 5 billion people, but they got one box where you, one official turn in ballot box, like where you could turn your early ballot in. And I'm like, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. really? I right. mean, so the, the, the oppression to suppress uh, people voting is in full force. But what the beauty, the beautiful thing that I'm seeing is people are not being deterred. They're going to stand in line. They're standing in line. They're filling, even if it's one box, they're filling those boxes. They're going in person and early voting. They're making sure that their ballots are getting in in plenty of time. And, and I personally believe that this is the most important presidential election of my lifetime so far. Now I can say, you know, look back when uh, president Obama ran the first time, that right. was the most historical. Historic. Let me be let me be clear. That was the most historical election of my lifetime. Mm-hmm. This is the most important. Like right, right. Dude, this the the things that are at stake and I really don't think people understand what's at stake with this election in the direction that our country is going in. Mm-hmm. Uh, we really want to uh, I I spoke about it last week. I said we are the United States of America. Of America. And and you know, the I, I said it last week. Either united we stand or divided we fall. Most definitely. And and that's and, it. That's it right there. And, and and we're not going to be able to operate as a country if we remain so divided. I don't mm-hmm. have to hate you to disagree with you. Right. I don't have to hate that's exactly you. Exactly right. I don't have to hate you to disagree with you. I tell people all the time, I say, hey. I do not have a problem with the fact that Donald Trump won and is the president. Mm -hmm. I have a problem with him not being a president for everyone. Bingo. And it's obvious. I said, Mm -hmm. you know, it would be different if he was just tackling different issues. He was, you know, he was just, but he don't. I said, it's just, it is what it is. I I said, that's my issue. He won. The man won Mm -hmm. within the system that we have more power to him. That's I just right. want you to do the job now at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. he's not effective at doing the job. You, uh, you can't, yes. You, yes. you can't just eliminate not just one segment of America, two, three, four, five. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and softball pitches, but let's break it down to North Carolina. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Hey. So what made you want to be a part of this political process? You know, um, Having representation um, from uh, your community means a lot. Um, Here in Davidson County, I love Davidson County, but, you know, we have never um, had a African-American representative from our county. Um, So, I mean, I, I feel that that is a must because, you know, we need to have, uh, people who can speak to every aspect of our county. Now, don't get me wrong. um, I think we have had great representation in the past. Uh, We have it now. I get along with our representatives and our senator very well. But in any aspect of life, you're going to have some people who see a particular situation one way. And then you're going to have another cross section of the the county or the situation that sees it a totally different way. Mm. And if you don't have representation or somebody that can speak to a specific uh, demographic, then 
I feel that those uh, issues are not going to be heard. So that kind of, you know, pushed me to run uh, for the seat. This is actually my second time running for District 80 uh, seat. Um, and, and, and that's what that's what I want to put in the forefront. And it's not just African-Americans that I want to represent or want to get their voice heard. It's just, you know, people who are in our community who feel that they don't have a voice. Mm. And those individuals are not just African-Americans. They come from all cross sections of our county. And they, you know, they have spoken to me like, you know, nobody ever comes and asks what we feel or what we want to see in our county. Right. Um, so, you know, that that's what kind of made me... Um, to, to run for this seat because I, I want to be the voice of the individuals who feel that they don't have a voice. Yeah, that, that is, that is so important. Uh, you know, instead of just blindly uh, supporting a candidate again, now what, what are you directly doing or, or, or trying to hear what's going on in my life and, and what directly affects me and how can you not only be a part of process, but how can you help affect change? Right. Um, right. You know, uh, we, you know, and I'm not trying to, I don't want anybody to think that I'm trying to, to beat up on President Trump just because right. I'm an openly supporter of, of, of Vice President Joe Biden. Mm-hmm. But I can't help but in my travels and my my highways and byways, and, and I see the signs in a yard that, that support Trump 2020. And I really, sometimes my heart aches because I want to go knock on the door and say, this man doesn't care about you. I said, look at how you're living. What is he doing to affect change in your life down here at right, your level? Right, I said, right. could you not be living better? Mm-hmm. Is he putting more money in your pocket to where it's affecting your household? Or, right, which right. affects the way you live. Right, um, right. You don't make enough money. It's just as a so he's really not his policies and so forth are not reaching out to you. And that's what exactly. you're talking about. The, the people who feel like they're not heard. And, exactly. and I, I can understand that uh, being there in Davidson County. I know that um, the, uh, some things that have just taken place uh, there recently, particularly in Lexington, with the removal mm-hmm. of the statue and so forth. Hey, right. I, I get it. You're going to some people are going to feel some way and some mm-hmm. people are going to feel another way. Um, right. And, and I say, hey, there's got to be some middle ground that where you can seek understanding rather than being understood. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, exactly. That's uh, exactly right. And, 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 and that's unfortunate because you say, OK, well, the whole line about, well, this is a part of history and this is, you know, patriotism. This is our history. I said, OK, well, well, how do you see that history? I said a lot of right. these statues and so forth. These people was trying to. You, you like one flag, but then you're trying to hold up. You can't have your cake and eat it, too. Right, right, right. I said, because if they the won, what would my state look like? What would I be doing right now? Where would what I would be? What would I be doing? Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's a great point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Right. You're right. Like, so what would my life be like right now? And so, but, you know, and that's just being able to openly have those conversations because, and that's what's rolling with Ramsey's all about. I tell people I want to have healthy conversations with people and discuss mm-hmm. things with them. And guess what? Whether we agree or not. But one thing is that we can't do. I can't stay on my side. You can't stay on your side. We got to meet in the middle. And we got to say, hey, this is how I feel. This is how you feel. Let's talk about it. Right. Right. And and I've been um, privileged to have those type of relationships. Um being in leadership positions here in Davidson County, I have found myself in in different circles within Davidson County um, with a lot of individuals. You know, Davidson County is a predominantly Republican county. Right. Um, and I have built relationships and friendships with a lot of individuals who are Republicans. Um, and just like you said, you know, we might be on different ends of the spectrum you know, as far as, as, as politics or, or policies or, or what have you, but we can find a way to come in and meet in the middle and say, yeah, I kind of see your point of view. And they can say to me, yeah, I kind of see your, your, your point of view and, and how you feel that way. 
but it's all about having that dialogue, having that conversation with individuals who do not think like you. And, um, you know, that's what we as, you know, people, uh, community members in our county or, or citizens in America, we just have to, to find a way to find that common ground and have that dialogue in those conversations. And I'm, I promise people that you would probably find more things that you have in common than things that you have um, not in common. That, that is so true. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I told the story last week of I was down in Alabama uh, getting the, the big cat worked on down in Red Bay, Alabama with the motor coaches down there. It's a home with Tiffin Motor Home. Shout out to them. Uh, okay. And a couple invited me to lunch. I was by myself. A couple invited me to lunch. Invited me to lunch. Got in Jeep with them. You know, they had their Trump 2020 hats on. And we had a phenomenal lunch. We had a great time. Mm-hmm. We had lunch. We mm-hmm. laughed. We joked. You can support your candidate. Guess what? I, I'm not going to deter you from supporting your candidate. It's not my job right, to ask right, you why. Right. Why are you following this dude? It's not my, you know, hey, if that's who you mm-hmm. support, we'll probably tell you. But right. We laughed, we joked over lunch, we had a good time, and the rest of the time I was there, I saw them every day. Very mm-hmm. nice people. And it, mm-hmm. it is what it is. Right, um, right. I, I think one of the issues we have right now uh, at our highest levels is that there's no compromise. And that's what's right, unfortunate. Right, that, you know, right. And so we've got to bring back some balance. We've got to bring back working together and not just hijacking the process altogether. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right, um, right. Yeah. And and I think, you know, another issue that we have that comes from the top is rearing up that 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 base that he has. You know, the the people who want to um make people be fearful of their America changing, you know, like telling people that if the Democrats get, you know, voted in that, you know, they're going to come and disrupt your suburban oh, yeah, lifestyle, that's, that's, yeah, that you is, know, different things like that, that you know, causes people to get anxious and causes people to be fearful when that has absolutely nothing to do with the political process. Um, and what I feel is that base is really not a large number. It's a, it's a small number, but that small number can, you know, cause so much confusion and put so much doubt in the minds of other civilized and educated supporters that they just kind of all roll up into one. And, and now it, everybody is in a panic. You're, you're, you're <laughs> so, right. You're uh, absolutely right. Which is, mm-hmm. you know, I've heard some of the most ridiculous things. And, I, and, I, and as a veteran who served 23 years, I could not be... Uh, more disappointed um, mm-hmm. right now. I feel, uh, I, I mean, I, I pray for my uh, brothers and sisters in arms, all our service members, uh, but I could not be more disappointed. Uh, I remember when uh, after 9-11 and so forth, I'd been to Afghanistan, I returned and President Bush came to Fort Drum to, to visit us. Mm-hmm. And I remember him walking out and me feeling a sense of reverence, like, wow, that's the president. Didn't agree right. with all his policies. George Bush, right. you know, it is what it is. But I had a sense of reverence, like, wow, that's the president. Man, I can see him. He's right, right there. It's kind of cool. I know I've personally spoken with many soldiers, sailors, airmen. They're like, man, if that dude can't, y'all don't know. I'm going to tell you right now. Service members are forced to make photo ops. It does not mean that they agree with the person that they're taking the picture with. Most definitely. They stand That's there right. and smile and we get briefings like you will not say this or do this, mm-hmm. this, that, and the other. Trust and believe you me. There are some That's people right. right now who want to retire, but will not retire because they do not want Donald Trump's name on their paperwork. Wow. Sounds, it sounds petty, but it is a whole bunch of folks that are holding on and praying. Wow. Wow. I'm telling you. Yeah. And so that is that is a sad situation. You think about it. That is very sad. I want the people to think about all the general things. No correspondence dinners. None of the sports teams want to go to the White House when they want championships. I mean, just, you know, really, he fed them McDonald's. He, he fed he fed the national champions football. He fed them McDonald's in the White right. House. 
Really? Right. I can go to McDonald's myself. If I come to the White right. House, I don't want no McDonald's. Right. They looking for a steak. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. I mean, asparagus or something. I mean, it's like, <laughs> and so I just want people to understand that it's bigger than one person. Right. Think about our standing in the world with our allies, how we're looking. Exactly. And just to remind people, he is yet to say anything against the fact that Russia took out bounties on American soldiers. He's not denounced it. He hasn't said anything about it. Nope. He yeah. only gives Putin praise. Mm -hmm. But that's on that level. Let's get back down to District 80. So what are your goals for District 80? Um, You know, I have several goals for uh, District 80. Um, you know, affordable housing. Um, I definitely believe that we need to expand Medicaid. Uh, people in our community need health care, especially okay. now during, you know, the COVID crisis, you know, um, with our state trying to open back up, you know, um, school systems trying to send children uh, back into the classroom. And, you know, the one thing that worries me so much about um, sending our students back into the classroom, especially, you know, students from the inner city is, God forbid they get sick. Who's going to pay that medical bill when wow. they have to they have to go see, you know, a doctor or be, in, be hospitalized or if they go home and give that, you know, um, that disease to, to a family member. You know, we you know, there's a, a cross section of our community that has no health insurance. Mm. You know, that that's an issue for me. Um, so definitely, you know, expanding Medicaid and getting our community members health care. Um, you know, definitely uh, finding still a solution to our opioid epidemic. Mm. You know, COVID has kind of wiped out, you know, the the information and the the the, um, the cry for help from that community who is still suffering from, you know, the opioid epidemic. Um, you know, we need treatment facilities for these individuals, not waiting lists and not, you know, having to go to three, four, five uh, treatment facilities before they're allowed to get help. Um, you know, definitely criminal justice reform is so needed in our community. Um, finding housing for people who are re-entering our community from prison and jail. Um, right now, you know, it's almost impossible to try to find um, these individuals um, housing to be able to help them re-enter our community, finding jobs, you know, where they don't have to put on their application right. that, you know, they have a felony on their record. Um, you know, just different things like that. Um, we'll to, is, it's just really important. Quality education, you know, as we talk, you know, rights of our service, uh, our military service members, that's right. really important. Um, but you never hear those things coming down from Raleigh. You know, all you hear about is the bickering. You know, maybe that's behind the door, you know, closed door sessions hey, that, listen, you know, the community I'll, doesn't I hear about. Be, I would be the first to say that, you know, as a disabled veteran, you know, we get a break on some things. But I wish they'd give me a break on these property taxes because they is killing right. my pocket. They're killing right. my pocket. Right. Killing. Right. And there, there's so many things that we can do as Americans to say thank you to our, our military service members. And those things are just not being discussed. And, and they, they really need to. And, and I'm going to tell you something that a lot of people do not realize and a lot of representatives might not realize or senators here in the state might not realize. You have homegrown folks who would love to retire here, but they look at how the state's going to treat a retired service member and what those benefits are. And there are a lot of states that do way better to take right. care of veterans way better than North Carolina right. does, which is shocking right. Right. because we have a army base that is never going to be on no base closure list ever. Fort Bragg mm -hmm. is going to be, it's the home of the 82nd Airborne. It's never going to be on a list. So you would think we would have one of the most robust, you know, hey, these are the benefits if you retire here. Boom, 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 mm -hmm. boom, boom. You know, right. it's right. not just about... Uh, the break on your housing or your house if you have a mortgage. No, this is a break on all of your property taxes and this, that, and the other. Because right, right. I do not want to tell you 
what I had to pay to get my license tag renewed on my motor coach. I don't want to. Oh, wow. I don't want to tell you that it was 2K plus to get my Ooh. sticker, to get my sticker for 2021. Wow. I know that's coming. So I have to have a tag renewal savings plan. Right. I exactly. put some money aside every month because mm -hmm. when March rolls around, I got to get my motor coach inspected. Right. But they going to hit right. me in the pocket for another used car just to get my tag renewed. Mm -hmm. And it makes me mm -hmm. like, well, dog. So then I start pulling tricks of the trade. Well, dude, I got a business in Texas. Do I go get it registered there? That's a lot of money to give up just mm -hmm. to get, you know, and it's like, wow, right. is it worth right. it? You know, yeah. and right. you shouldn't have to make those type of concessions in your home state. Exactly. The That's other, true. The other thing I heard you talk about was was Medicare uh, and Medicaid uh, for mm -hmm. health. What I what I challenge you to do is inform your community about a living trust, because there's a lot of people who do not know how Medicare and Medicaid work. OK, if you own it they are going to take it. Right. That's true. And there's a segment of the community who understand what a living trust is. Now, mm -hmm. it's not just about being able to bring somebody in and help you establish a living trust. Every state is different. Don't hold me to this. I'm taking a shot in the dark here, guys. But I think North Carolina looks back five years. Mm, so what Medicaid, okay. every, it's different for every state, how many years they look back. So it's not like you can just establish this and say you're good. No, you have to have this established for a number of years before they say, OK, you don't own anything. Right. Right. So, yeah, and that is something That's because true. a lot of people don't understand. Uh, there are a lot of people in the communities that find themselves in a position. And unfortunately, low income communities, communities of color. Uh, where this has not uh, been brought to the forefront, and then and, and people are losing houses, they're losing they're losing cars, they're losing yes things yes, that have you're right. things that have been in families for generation. You know, mm -hmm. Big Mama House is supposed to be with us, but guess what? It's gone because she got sick, and mm -hmm. if we can't afford to take care of her. We don't have no choice but to put her on Medicare or Medicaid, and now they own everything. They done took right. all her stuff. Right. Yeah. And that that happened. Matter of fact, to um, our family, when my grandfather um, had a, a slight stroke and um, had to go into an assisted living facility. Um, wow. And, you know, they they look back to see, you know, did, did he own a home? Did he own right. cars? You know, but, you know, thankfully, we did have that that trust and that that living, you know, will that, right. you know, that that property could just transfer over to my mom. So, you know, we got to keep his property in the family, but they, they definitely will do that. Debbie, You're exactly right. Debbie, uh, who's who's rolling with Ramsey today, she said Alabama's look back is 10 years. So oh, wow. It's 10 years. That is a long time. So, to, to a, so if people don't know what a living trust is, it's basically where you have everything, but you own nothing. The trust mm -hmm. owns it all. You right. don't, as an individual, right. you don't own anything. It's in this trust. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, it's the Ramsey Trust. Okay, so, but it has to be established legally. That requires an attorney to do it, to set it up properly. Then guess what? So we're talking about a whole bunch of things that the average person can afford. Most definitely. Or they're not even seeking the counsel of an attorney unless somebody gets in trouble. Mm -hmm. They can't afford a very good one a lot of times. So you understand what I'm saying? So these are things that are that are not discussed. Tony Graham, I see you, brother. You're rolling with Ramsey today. And so, yeah, so these are things that are not discussed um, right, in our communities. Right. And, and I and I often say, hey, why are we not talking about this on church on Sunday? I just don't understand. I'm just saying uh, mm -hmm. those are one of those things. You talked about the um, educational piece. Mm -hmm. uh, I will tell you right now, I am very scared of the urban community and communities of color right now for our children in the educational yeah. piece. You know, That's right. uh, I have a, I have my great niece. Uh, she's uh, doing a virtual learning. But guess what? She's in a household where there's a stable Internet connection. She's in a household where she can ask somebody, hey, I don't understand how the law is um, or she can get her questions answered and so forth. Somebody to ask if she's got a problem. She's got the devices to be able to do her work. Exactly. Um, so it's easy for her. Well, guess what? I know she is in the minority. Yes. Very much so. That's right. Kids are at home. Parents still got to work. Um, they don't have computers. They don't have a stable internet connection. 
Mm -hmm. um, they might not even understand how to get on Blackboard and what is that? And and we're getting left behind. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, I, I definitely agree. I agree with that. Um, I have a 15 uh, year old daughter who um, is doing virtual learning right now. And um, it's definitely been a challenge. Um, you know, I still work full time. My husband still works full time. Um, and even my son, who just started uh, community college uh, a few weeks ago, you know, him having to be home and, and making sure that, you know, he's getting everything that he needs to get, that my daughter is getting everything that, you know, she needs to get. And, you know, I had to stress to her, you know, just because it's virtual learning is still extremely, extremely important. important right. You know, yeah. so there's no, you know, laying in the bed, you know, on your laptop, you know, you need to get up, sit up at your desk, you know, turn the light on, <laughs> put your clothes on. I need mean, for you to act like you were going to an actual school setting. Right. And but just like you said, there are a lot of parents who can't do that. If they're out, you know, the door at 7.30 right. to work at 8, there's no telling what the children are doing during that school day. So, you know, it's very concerning. It really is. You know, it is. You know, and, and, and I was talking, matter of fact, uh, I think I was talking about this with Tony. You know, I look at, you know, even over here in High Point at the, at the housing communities, the housing projects and so forth. Um, I just thought about it one day. I said, so why aren't there either city internet hotspots in these communities or why is it just basic cable and internet just automatically come with every house? Right. Right. So I'm just saying, why is right. it just, it just automatically comes with the house, you know what I'm saying? Or right. did they put up some right. hotspot towers or something? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I said, we've got to be able to evolve with the times and what's important because mm -hmm. kids and, and, and I was really worried about it because Kids don't understand. This is this is high school, middle school, elementary school. Until you're actually paying to go to school, you don't understand how important it is to finish. Because look, exactly. I dreaded doing when I got my MBA, and, and professor like, look, this paper dude, look, you will move at all costs. I will never forget. I was in the middle of an exam, and a dude was putting up a fence next door, and he cut the and man. Oh, wow. So the exam was still going and the signal was lost. And I jumped in the car and went to McDonald's and got in the corner. I was right. like, whoo. Right. <laughs> I jumped right back on there. I did what I had to do, but the importance of it, it doesn't mean the same. And I understand that they are losing the camaraderie of school and so forth. But mm -hmm. the it, it, it's, it's tough for them. I can't imagine what a child a teenager is just going through my best friend out in California. His wife is a special needs teacher. So I was on the phone with him oh, yesterday yeah. and yeah. I could hear her in the background. Look, the little girl's name was angel. Okay. Angel, you got to pay attention. Angel, you got to pay attention. Angel, do I need to repeat the question again? Angel, like, it ain't like you in the classroom where you could look, angel, you need to sit down. You know, mm -hmm. she's like, Angel, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you this question one more time. Right. And I'm like, exactly. Wow. And I'm listening yeah. to the struggle. And that is just, you know, so um, teachers are educators who have always been underpaid. Uh, they are working overtime right now Ooh. to, yes, to they are. keep our yes, kids they are. afloat. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, we want to get them back to school. But more importantly, we want our kids to get back to school safely because that domino yeah. effect uh, is it is crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I know here um, in Thomasville, when I first got elected to our Thomasville city council, that was one of the things that I was really um, adamant about is getting a uh, area of our downtown that had um, Wi-Fi access. So we do have that in our downtown area. And I believe Lexington has that, has that also. Um, but now that I think about it, yeah, we got um, Wi-Fi access but how are the babies supposed to get to the downtown area, right. you know, to, to access the, the Wi-Fi. So, you know, it's just so much that goes into planning and trying to make sure that the students have everything that they need. Um, last I heard, I think we still have some students who do not have the devices that they need to be able to, you know, to do their schoolwork. So I right. guess with a shortage with, you know, school systems around the country going virtual, 
you know, I guess they're behind on, you know, making or producing or shipping out, you know, laptops and Chromebooks and things of that nature. So yeah. it's just, it's still so much that, that needs to be addressed. Um, and I, I, I don't know how we're, we're going to, we're going to get that done. And, and you know, the, the sad thing, that it, the sad thing is, is is a basic principle that could have had us in a much better place. Lead by example, mm-hmm. just put on a mask. You know, just put on a mask, you, you know, and so not having that national strategy or not having that come from the top just makes people. My father's 92. He's 92. I, I'm with him every day. When I leave the house, you best believe I got a mask on. Mm-hmm. I don't know you like that. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Right. If That's I bring right. coronavirus home to Charles Sr., it's a death sentence. Right. That's, that's there's right. no if ands or buts about it. He's not going to make it. That's right. That's and, you right. know, and so I owe it to him to make sure that I'm doing everything that I can when I am out and about. Mm-hmm. If I don't yeah. know, you know, and so everybody has something different at stake. Um, I, I tell people all the time, I say, I don't know if you have good Corona habits. I call you. What's your good virus habits? Do you? I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sorry. Right. That's I, right. I, I'm not going to call the name of the restaurant. I'm not trying to. Uh, deter business from anyone, but I went and got some, went to order some dinner last week and I was appalled. I went into this place. It's close to my home. Nobody had a mask on. They was in there wow. like everything was normal. That's fine. And I was like, I, I said, they were like, we will make an order. And I was like, you know what? I'm good. Mm-hmm. I, I got to get out of here. Like right now. That's right. I said, I'm good. I, you That's know, That's right. Yeah. Uh, and, and um, I, I just, you know, I wish that we just I hope that we can come to a, to another and a different thought process on that. Mm-hmm. Um, and just like I was telling uh, my kids um, probably about a maybe about two, three weeks ago. And uh, my daughter was asking me, she was like, you know, how come the United States, you know, is having all of these issues with outbreaks and, you know, people getting sick? And I told her, I said, do you remember probably maybe December, January? It was before all of this um, COVID uh, outbreak here in the United States. And I said, do you remember seeing on the news when like Italy and France and different countries um, overseas had shut the whole country down? Like people were out on their balcony singing and clapping and, you know, just talking to each other from the balconies. I said, because their government understood that in order to get that this disease under control, they had to shut their system down. They shut it down for like three or four months and they 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 good. Wendy, you know, it's funny to me. And I know this is going to sound crazy. I just couldn't understand why we just didn't put anything on pause. Like we just didn't hit a big pause button. Like, guess what? No collecting money, no making money, no. Listen, it's all on pause. And no, right. we're not going to charge you for back electricity and this, <laughs> that, and the other. It's just right. on pause, except for eating and things like that. So well, how are people going to eat and make money? Okay, we will sting you. A lot of people don't know. To the north, do people know how much money Canada was giving their citizens every month? Mm-hmm. Every month, people were receiving four to eight thousand dollars per citizen every month that they shut things down. Not twelve hundred dollars. They was getting <laughs> four to eight thousand dollars a month. Mm-hmm. You can do something with four to eight thousand dollars. You can stimulate. You can pay for your food. You can keep your economy going if you're mm-hmm. giving out that kind of money. Twelve hundred dollars is it, that's not even the payment on my motor coach. <laughs> I'm just right. You know, I'm right. saying that's okay. one bill for people. That's the rent for one month, or not even the mortgage payment on a house. I mean, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. you know, people are like, oh, we're getting this money. I'm like, that's not any money. It's a one time payment. That's right. It's 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 no money. Mm-hmm. How is that helping? And so we've right. just got to try to get back to where we are trying to use a sense of, of common sense 
Um, right, right. And I just wonder, you know, if the United States would have done that, how many of our small businesses, how many of our restaurants, how many of those uh, which, businesses would still be working, be, still be right. up, you know, even, exactly. if, even if it was take out, but your business would have still been flowing because people would have still been able to put back into your business. OK, I'm going to come exactly. support you. I'm going to come support you. I can afford to support you. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. But instead, we've got huge lines at food banks still. Still. We still That's have a right. huge, huge line of food banks. I said, I do not take it for granted. I'm not trying to get no uh, attaboy or accolade here. But you know what? I've been in Walmart and been behind people and seen the strain in their eyes. A single mm -hmm. mother who was clearly trying to, like, I'm going to pay for it. You know, and, and I don't step to the, I'll take care of it. Here, just just mm -hmm. put that all on me. You good. Right, right. But that, you, do mm -hmm. I, nope, just, you good. You know, right. um, and, and so it's kind of sad. Uh, it, it really is from, from that aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, it can You're be, right. It can be You're outside. right. So, you know, even here in North Carolina, uh, let's let's try to, like I said, stay focused right here in North Carolina. So Davidson County, I still believe it, it, it is Davidson. Uh, did I see them doing some construction out by the airport? Uh, I think uh, I, or, or that's a, possible. Like a possible walkway. I don't know. It was an aviator I saw. Maybe they were putting in. Uh, a new ILS system for the airport. Okay. Right out okay. There see. Yeah, I think they've been doing some um, revamping or um, construction out there. Um, and it's it's been years since I've been out the High Rock Lake. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, there's still a place uh, to go as well out in that area. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I know Lake Tomalex is uh, have been doing a lot of work out there on their trails. Um, okay, you know, for our, our citizens who like to bike ride or yeah. you know, um, walking trails and different things like that. So they they've done a, a great job out there as far as that's concerned. So, mm -hmm. so we we really let, let's talk about what's really important. We need to get past this pandemic so the barbecue festival could come back because I need to eat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just saying. I know I was mad because we ain't have uh, everybody's day in Thomasville. You know, this is the first year that we have not had everybody's day. I, I want to say that that festival is over 100 years, you know, that they've had it. But, you know, they, they shut it down. And, you know, I was a little upset because I get my kettle corn right. every year. <laughs> right? From the same kettle corn man. He's the He'd be in the same place every year. Oh, wow. So I'm, you know, I'm looking at the Chamber of Commerce, like, can y'all get the address to the kettle corn man? So I can, <laughs> you know, I need to call him, send him a, you know, a telegram or something because I need my kettle corn. Oh, we, we, <laughs> we definitely, we, we definitely want to um, uh, make sure that, that people uh, understand that, that the human side of what's happening um, mm -hmm. down to little things like that that, that motivate people, people, things that people look forward to and are happening and so forth. Things uh, that families are being able to get out and used to doing together are not being able right. to happen. Um, mm. That being said, how's your campaign going? If we got folks out there that still want to donate to you, where can they donate at? Ooh, donations. Um, I have a tab on my website. Um, it's my campaign website and it's uh, Wendy Sellers, S E L L A R S dot com. Um, you can go to that website. You can see uh, all of my um, my platform, all the information um, about why I'm running, what I want to do um, once I get to Raleigh. Um, everything you need to know or want to know about uh, the campaign for Wendy Sellers is on that page. So, you know, you can definitely go there and donate. We would definitely appreciate it. That's awesome. We definitely want to make that happen and get that plug in because uh, we understand that, you know, hey, you guys don't understand. You, you, it's not easy running. Uh, it's not. And, and it's it, not. You know, we wish it was grassroots like France, but it's not that mm -hmm. way. Right, uh, right. And what's even more difficult about running is to get community members and citizens to understand what it takes to get elected, you know, what it takes to be able to run a successful campaign. Um, you know, it takes that those volunteer hours. It takes, you know, people standing out at, at early voting or standing out in the polls, being poll greeters, giving out, you know, information cards because, you know, you might not think, but some people are still undecided when they're when they get to the polls. You know, some people are still, you know, in, in between not really knowing who they want to vote for. So if that poll breeder is there and they can, you know, give them a smile and hand them a card and say, 
you know, please consider this candidate. Right. You know, this is what she she stands for. This is what she wants to do for our community. That really means a lot. Um, you know, definitely making phone calls and sending out texts to, you know, your uh, friends and family and, you know, church members or, you know, people you do aerobics with. You know, that, that's really important work, you know, making phone calls and, you know, just making sure that people are getting out and voting. That's the most important thing. That's the most important thing. Getting out of the vote, because right. guess what? People died for our right to vote. Most uh, definitely. You know, and, and I'm very I am very much a proponent of voting. Every vote does count. Mm -hmm, uh, we cannot mm -hmm. go back and change history. But we can affect history and be affecting change through the power of voting. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't understand that. Uh, right. You want to yeah. get an idea of where uh, we are and in, in, in how we got to this point and how things could have been different? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I tell everybody, I say, you need to watch the, watch the Broadway play Hamilton. I said, mm. I said, go watch Hamilton. I said, watch Hamilton. Even if you don't like rap music, just listen to the story. Mm -hmm. Because if Alexander mm -hmm. Hamilton had became president, we might not be talking about Abraham Lincoln and the Emancipation Proclamation. That's he right. Was anti, That's right. He was anti-slavery. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And he worked for yeah. George Washington. And he, he would have eventually become president before Lincoln, right. I'm sure. Right, uh, right. And so I, I tell people all the time, I said, you should just go watch Go go watch Hamilton, mm -hmm. and, so it's and there's 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 so much information out there about what um, people of color had to endure just to be able to vote. Um, I saw a story on Facebook the other day about a town somewhere in, uh, in the South, and just because that community, you know, wanted to vote, you know, they got put out of their homes and they had to live in tents. Um, yeah. just because they wanted to to vote and, and have their voice heard. Um, I have a friend, Mr. William Porter, who um, is um, really, um, you know, successful here in the city of Thomasville. Um, he put up a post about, um, he showed the receipt of the poll tax that his great, great uh, grandparents had to, to pay just to be able to vote. Mm. You know, we, we, as as a society or or people of color we don't think about you know what it took for us to get this right to vote you know people were hung and and shot and 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 killed and you know put out of their homes just because they wanted to wanted the to right vote. to vote That's just right. like every other american we're not asking for anything different we're not asking you know for a limousine to come and pull up at our house and take us to the polls we want we just want the right just like every other american and, to be able to say you know i have a voice in this america and that's, and that's all we're asking for and, and that's amazing with everything that's going on the the whole black lives matter movement and and i and i tell people i was having a conversation the other day and i said hey i want you to think about something i said we're we're, we're talking about the black lives matter movement and it was great i saw one of the most beautiful things that was i was coming back from Raleigh and I stopped uh, to go to Target or something right at the major exit in Burlington. And it was a white couple by themselves on the corner with the Black Lives Matter sound. And I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I said, but I said, hey, this is great. This is a movement. This is something to think about. And this is awesome. I said, but we don't see anybody out with the sign that says Native American Lives Matter. Mm. I said, in you know, all our history for the United States of America is not good. Mm -hmm. We got to understand and admit we have some dark moments that we have just kind of, if there's ever a disenfranchised group of people, yes. we put them on just a particular plot of land and said, all right, y'all just go live over here and, and we're not going to have nothing to do with you. Mm -hmm. And I just just it's funny that you bring that up because I just had that conversation with my son. Um, you know, I just have different conversations yeah, about yeah. him. And and he was asking he was actually talking about the HBO uh, series Lovecraft Country. Right. And all of the underlying messages that that series has. And we were just kind of dialoguing and talking right. about that. And I told him, I said, you know, one segment of our country that you hardly ever hear about 
our Native Americans, you know, how um, just they were treated or they are being treated. Oh, just like oh, you said, I, they put I, them I, on a plot of land, you know, called it a reservation and just kind of left them. And, and, you know, they, they took their culture, their heritage, everything. they tried to indoctrinate their children. But it's the, horrible. But the crazy thing is, is, is they don't have any representation. Exactly. There's no, there's exactly. no senators or congressmen for reservations, and That's you know, right. and so, uh, you know, I, I say that just to say this. I said it's not, it's, it's not fair. And when I say that there are a lot of issues that are overlooked, missing women, murders, rape, suicide rate, domestic violence, they don't have access if they're investigating a murder on the reservation, they don't have access to the FBI crime lab. You all have no idea how deep the rabbit hole goes. So when you talk about who was here first, you sing that old song, this land is your land, this land is our land. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And then we still have the nerve to call it Columbus Day. Yeah, right. And, and so still, still, and we know, we know the story. Right, America knows the story, but we still call it Columbus Day. Call it Columbus Day, and, and that's why I said it, it's it's really, you know, and, and like I said, I'm not trying to to, to beat up on America. I, I love the country. I love my country. I do. I love my country too. I, I just believe you. that we can do better. Most definitely, we can do better, and we shall. But that being said, it's time for rapid fire. All right, so rapid fire is I got some questions right here. You got to answer these questions uh, right. as fast as possible. We're going to try to do them in, in, in about the next 30 seconds if we can. All right, you ready? Okay. All right, I'm here ready. We, here we go. All right. What do you value most in your friends? Uh, trust. Mm. If you could instantly become, um, if you could instantly become one, what would you be an expert in? Say that one more time. If you could instantly become an expert in something, what would it be? Uh, oh, finances. All right. What is your most treasured possession? My children. All right. What's left on your bucket list? Going to Alaska. All right. And if you could send a message to the entire world in 30 seconds, what would you say? Um, be true to your true to yourself. Know your why, know your worth. Um, make sure that, you know, whatever you want to do in this world, um, that you go for it and you follow through because, you know, you only get one life to live. And if you don't, you know, do the things that you want to do in life, um, you will definitely re- regret it. That's it. You made it through Rappy Fire. That's what I'm talking about. Woody Sellers made it. Hey, <laughs> hey, listen, one more time before I let you get out of here. Uh, tell everybody how they can donate to your campaign once again. Okay, you can uh, go to my uh, website, which is wendysellers.com. That's Sellers, uh, S-E-L-L-A-R-S. There is a donation tab uh, on that website, and we appreciate your donations. Hey, that's what's up. We want to thank you for rolling with Ramsey today. We wish you well, and hopefully we will bring you back, you know, in the near future, next couple of weeks, and you'll be representative sellers then representing District 80. That's right. That's right. Thank you so much for giving me this platform and being able to speak with you and your listeners uh, this evening. Um, Thank you so much. Oh, you're quite welcome. And once again, we thank you for rolling with Ramsey. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Right? All right, guys. And so, hey, guess what? We are a week out from Election Day. And before we get out of here this week, I want to tell everybody, listen, you guys see me next week. We'll be talking about the election. We'll be talking about the presidential race and all the other races and the major races around the country, um, the political races that that took place. And uh, hopefully we'll have an idea of, of our next president is going to be, whether it's going to, uh, we're going to keep rolling with, with Donald J. Trump, or if we'll have a new president uh, in Senator Joe Biden. So I want to thank everybody once again for rolling with Ramsey. And like always, please 
like the Rolling With Ramsey Facebook page, follow us on Instagram, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hey, and you can listen to Rolling With Ramsey on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music slash Audible, and last but not least, brrr, Save Radio. Hey, guys, like I like to say every week, I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. And thank you for once again rolling with Ramsey. Go vote, and I'll see you next week. Peace.